Okay, so here I am in Lightroom CC. This is the brand new version of Lightroom that Adobe re released a couple of days ago. And they've really kind of split off now uh, two different products entirely. And they look and feel really quite different or they certainly um they certainly look very different they still have similar functionality between them but the idea of the two of them seems to be very very different you've got lightroom photoshop lightroom classic um uh, 2018 or something or see creative cloud and then you have this which is lightroom cc and the whole point of lightroom cc it would seem and i you know i'm not an expert on it i'm just kind of i've had a play around with it i've installed it taken it and i'm just really taking a look at it now i think the whole point of it is of course that it's it's all cloud based so everything syncs between this which is your desktop application but it's really all focused around your data and your adjustments being easily accessible and transferable between devices so you also have your app on your on your phone which i mean a lightroom's app app has existed for some time but it's never been quite as well integrated as it is now anyway so let's get started i'm just going to put some pictures into here now and i'm going to do everything with the mouse i'm not going to use any shortcuts for this but the first thing you notice is it's a really kind of cut down, it looks anyway, like a very cut down version, but don't really be fooled by that because you might be used to the, all those kind of sliders down the side and your develop module and all that type of stuff, but it's not, they've kind of changed a lot of that, but you can still do all the stuff that you did before. So let's add some photos to this. And I, I, put, I chose a kind of album of raw photos that's on my desktop somewhere. So I'm just going to find that if I can. Uh, it's about two gig of raw photos. So I want to put it through a reasonable test because, you know, I don't want it to just. Okay, we got a bit of, wow, that was ages ago. Okay, so these are the ones from from last year when we went over to Bath. I mean, seriously, this is how often me and Rod get chance to go out and do and uh, take any pictures these days. Uh, this is like a year ago. Anyway, so here we go. These are all the pictures, and this is our kind of area to review them, and this is sort of like your import area in the current Lightroom. And this all looks good. Add 101 photos. Well, I guess I can deselect some of the ones I don't want to. Uh, can I find out any more information from here? Show and explore. No, it's all pretty straightforward, this. To select this, import them or not. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say I want to add all 101 photos. So let's see kind of how long it's going to take to do this. So these have been added down the bottom. We've got our familiar film strip type look of thumbnails down the bottom. So as you can see, I mean, the performance of adding these pictures, I assume this is all being done locally, because if you look up the top now, we're, we're, we've got a, a section that's uploading. So this is using your creative cloud storage space and it will now upload those raw photos so that they're available to edit and do any work you want to do on them from anywhere which is not a new thing you know I kind of I've worked with Google Docs for a long time now in that very same way but this is a bit different because of course raw photos are not tiny you know they're certainly upwards of probably 20 30 megabytes each so and bigger, of course, when you're talking about uh, sort of, uh, you know, larger resolution sensors now. But you can see that performance, pretty good. We've got them all presumably cached locally to allow me to have a play around while I do this. But let's see. Okay, so we've got, the, we've got them imported. So you'll notice again, no develop section. We've just got our controls down the left-hand side here. So if I open those up, we've got a, the histogram, and then we get to something that you're a little bit more familiar with probably. So all the kind of controls around exposure, contrast, and you've got these slightly annoying pop-up help things, which I'm, I just feel that Adobe here are trying to open up Lightroom and editing of images in this way to a wider audience not just your kind of old time lightroom users who are familiar with this maybe slightly clunky not i mean i, I love the software but i'm also used to the software 
if people are more familiar with this type of thing now. So they probably find it useful to have these pop-up windows telling them what each of these controls do. And I guess you can disable them somewhere. I have to point out at this stage, um, Adobe, that please can you make this expandable? As it stands, I can't adjust the width of these. This, to me, is not enough movement. I it, It's just... On, on the type of screen I'm on and the type of resolution mouse, so I don't know the reason, this, being able to adjust it this much, is, is not enough. I need this twice the width, so I've got a nice big slider to make my movements on. At the moment, this is locked down. I don't think you can adjust this. I certainly couldn't find a way to do it. So that would be one thing that I've already noticed that I would definitely change. But you know, you go down here and you can see you've got your know, color temperature sections and all the standard stuff. And then you can open up effects. You can have them open one at a time or um, expand them all out like this. Normal stuff, sharpening, noise reduction. It's cut down a little bit, I suppose. Have we got anything that... No, 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 show more options. Apologies. No, it's not at all. Um, it's just all kind of collapsed upwards so noise reduction here you've got the extra options in here yeah because under the sharpening section i was after this masking uh, masking off you know the um the, the blur the the, the non-sharp bits to so, you know so the sharpening doesn't impact them at all but let's just do a quick crop on this image so let's go to our crop section and let's bring uh, let's bring it in so we've just got this guy in shot here and Fine, got some nice focus on that, but you can see the performance is absolutely great. And it just sits here doing its upload in the background. If I click on here, you pro it's just outside my capture window, actually. You can't see it, but it's just, uh, you know, just syncing the, syncing the photos there with my 100 gig of storage. Uh, they are obviously opening up bigger amounts of storage now. I think they are kind of saying, come ahead, you know enter our fold of um, storing your data with Adobe and uh, will you can buy one terabyte of storage or two terabytes of storage for probably a reasonable price because cloud storage is much, much cheaper than it, than it ever has been and it's really quite reasonable now. So, you know, you can get a terabyte of storage for no, you know, I don't know what the amount is, go on their website, have a look, but it's nothing too crazy. Puts, I will add, maybe add some creative... Maybe just I don't know, just a just just adjust the temperature a bit and change push push the contrast up. I don't, I'm just doing anything here really to um, uh, optics. So we've got our lens correction. Shouldn't be too much. This is on the 85 mil, so it doesn't have too much lens correction. Yeah, fine. I mean that's good enough. Uh, and then we go to healing section, so we can do our healing brush as we would normally. Now, how do I zoom in without? Can I zoom without? No, so that's just done it. I didn't want to do that. How do I zoom in? Oh, so I can I can zoom in down the bottom here, and I assume you can do it with shortcuts as well. But it's just one to one to one, and see so that's just. I can't move around the image too well at this point. Do I have to move? Am I do? Am I missing something really obvious here? So if I'm if I'm on my healing brush, do I have to move away or can I can I press down the scrolling button? No, I can't do can I do right click? No. How can I move around this image then? I'm not sure. I'm probably just missing something really obvious. So I'm just going to do it the way that I know. I'm going to scroll back to here and I'm just going to quickly use the healing brush to get rid. So standard scroll wheel to make it smaller. And get rid of this little. Let's see, I mean that's that's super quick. That's nice. Very very fast. And then all our standard brush stuff. So if I zoom out, uh, sorry, if I go to my brush stuff and I go to fit, and then my I'm just going to make this re a really warm bit at the top. I can just paint in. A nice warm section, but leave him cool. There we are, really nicely done. 
So anyway, I'm not going to really dwell on this because, you, you know, if you're watching this, you probably already know how to use Lightroom. But I'm just showing you the fact that even though this looks like a cut down basic version of Lightroom, it still has everything that the other one had. And it, the performance is excellent. Radial gradients. Yeah. So of, of all the, I mean, most of the stuff that I do on Lightroom, I'm sure there's more advanced stuff that you'll that may be missing from here that realistically when i'm editing photos i rarely get around to using let's we can save save this out the export option is pretty basic i have to say uh but again i stress the fact that if i'm saving to a jpeg or i, I usually do save to a jpeg or or an original and if i do want to change the size of it you can either say full size small but or if i do it custom i'll always put a long edge length in there i never use anything else so to me there's nothing about the quality of the jpeg i'm guessing it will be it'll be a kind of um, jpeg mini type quality and by that i mean it will be as good as it needs to be to visually not to be any different from the original but again not sure because there's no nothing that uh seems to allow you to set this so these are still syncing in the background we're now down to 56 photos so this these should now be available or starting to become available on my phone so i'm gonna just pause for a second and i'm gonna open up my phone and have a look on there right so here we are on my iphone 6 plus not a particularly new device, 2015 in fact. Or was it even, was it 15 or 14? No, I think it was 15. And I've installed the new app or the latest app. So they're my old pictures, right? So there we go. We've already got these coming in now and it highlights the fact that they're raw. The one we made an adjustment to and I've got nothing to actually kind of show you here, I, I don't think. Um, well, I can show you with my cursor, I guess, is uh, is this one. But uh, I don't think it will have... Well, I'll have a go. I'll go into that one and see if it syncs up the changes. Oh, I don't know. What, I'm not quite sure how that works yet. So let's go into that image because we've obviously cropped this image and made quite a few changes to it. Well, I'm... What I'm doing here, or what you just saw uh, the end of there, was bringing in an original picture because by default it's set to only bring in a smart preview of your photos because, of course, as I mentioned before, the raw photos will take up quite a lot of space. So it's now, I've actually asked it specifically to bring in the original of this picture. So we just zoom in on this again and let's make a couple of edits to it. Now, is was this going to sort of push the quality up or is this relying on the smart preview? Because obviously you can see there that, oh no, there we go. It's rendered it now and the quality looks great. It's, they've done a pretty nice job of this app. Now, again, I say, I say I'm say i not an expert in this because I haven't used this stuff recently. They may, they may have made these changes to the app some time ago. When I first used it, I wasn't that impressed with the um the functionality on the app and just didn't really see it being something i particularly wanted to wanted to use but right now they've done a pretty good job of it and uh, you get on the right hand side here you've got all your standard uh crop stuff so i can just turn off my probably should turn off my aspect ratio shouldn't i uh, where can i do that custom bring him I'm kind of looking down on my phone here uh, let's bring him in like that fine click the check and then in here you've got all the standard adjustments I've got this set to landscape on my phone because I wanted to be able to show it you more clearly on the display but of course it works in portrait as well it just changes how the stuff's laid out so yeah I can mess about with this exactly as I would a photo in um, Lightroom. It's a little bit fiddly. It's certainly not as satisfying as um, twist, tweaking those sliders, sliders, pushing and pulling those sliders in Lightroom in the uh, original sort of desktop version, but it works great if you need it. And you've got a curve here as well, so I can chuck in a bit of a standard S curve on here. Too much, but you get the point. It's really thrown out your skin tones now, isn't it? That um, Let's try an undo. That's fine. 
And you've even got stuff like, if I go up, so if I add healing brush, I can add a brush onto here, or I can add a radial gradient onto here, like this, and then change the exposure within that radial gradient, or, you know, have it just slightly, slightly brighter on his head to, to highlight it. So this, again, yeah, standard stuff for Lightroom, but this is all possible, entirely possible now uh, through the app, and the two, in fact, the three are designed to work really well together. You get the idea, but it's really just a look at the new Lightroom CC application and the complete new look and feel of that software. But they're continuing on the classic and they're continuing on the standard Lightroom that we're all familiar with. I wonder for how long. I don't know. What do you think of the new design? Do you, do you like all these kind of simpler buttons down the side? I like it because it's so responsive. You know, I, I'm not, don't, not a big fan of all, I like, I don't mind the complex, complexity. I don't mind having all those options, but if it does what I need it to do, that's good enough, isn't it? I mean, and it does it really quickly. It certainly seems to anyway, it's very responsive. So um, yeah, what do you think about it? Have you tried it yet? Are you gonna try it? Or uh, is it not, you know, you're happy with what you've got? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.